Welcome one all in here, out there, all around the world to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And today, <laughs> check your calendar. Check your calendar, my friends, because today is February 1st, and I want to start off by wishing everyone a happy Black History Month. <laughs> for, for, for Americans, it's a time to celebrate the black experience and black contributions to our country, and for corporate brands, it's a time to suggest that Langston Hughes would have loved the new Wendy's Double Baconator. <laughs> Unfortunately, 14 states have a weird way of celebrating Black History Month with new rules that limit how teachers can teach Black History Month. Or as the teachers... Or as the teachers will now be forced to call it, month. <laughs> One black educator warned that these new laws would mean that teachers could mention that Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's color line but not discuss why black players were banned. They could also mention soul singer Marvin Gaye, but not discuss his what's going on lyrics. <laughs> Instead, school districts would have to teach this version. Lewis? Mother, mother, gee, your blouse looks nice today. Brother, 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 I made you this. Play. You know I just came here to say that everything is a-okay. Hey, nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Terrible lyrics but I somehow still want to have sex. <laughs> That's how powerful Marvin Gaye is. <laughs> Speaking of trying to... One person applauding me having sex up there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of trying to erase history, we're learning more about former President Cusolini. <laughs> the January 6th committee just got new proof that he was directly involved in proposals to use his national security agencies to seize voting machines. Quite a turn for an election campaign. His slogan went from, keep America great, to seize them, you fools! <laughs> Let's be clear. It is difficult, after years of building a thick, protective callus over my heart and my brain, just to protect myself from the hot black tar of his narcissistic evil impulses, for me to take this information in for the, the gargantuan and grotesque violation of everything that this country holds dear. But I think it's worth taking a moment right now just to, just to let this sink in, just to marinate in his madness. At home, you might want to pause your DVR to scream into a bag or punch a hole in the drywall. <laughs> because, to be clear, the former president, still the leader of one of the two major parties who has all the Republican balls in a little velvet pouch that he wears around his neck like an amulet, <laughs> wanted troops, U.S. troops, to go into your local polling place, grab the machines, throw them in a truck, and then God knows what, waterboard them until they say he won. <laughs> you should be alarmed even if you voted for him because military coups do not lead to healthy societies. No one ever says, if only we could emulate the economic miracle that is Myanmar. <laughs> and he tried so hard to get this done. In fact, in fact, <laughs> Myanmar, <laughs> Myanmar. In fact, in his four years in office, this may be the thing he worked hardest on. In November, he asked whether the Justice Department could seize the machines. They said, what? No. So, he directed his lawyer, Rudolph W. Giuliani, to ask the Department of Homeland Security if it could legally take control of voting machines in key swing states. No one asks if they're legally allowed to do something, unless they're pretty sure it's illegal. Hey, uh, you're my lawyer, let me ask you this. Is there any way I could legally sell heroin as an antidepressant? <laughs> no? Well, that news makes me really sad. <laughs> no, it would help? A little black tar Zoloft. <laughs> the Department of Homeland Security turned him down, but the ex-president also reviewed a proposal to have the Pentagon take control of the machines. That is horrifying. The only time the military should take control of the machines is when we inevitably go to war against our robot overlords. I will not bow down before my Roomba. <laughs> this Pentagon scheme 
was pushed by disgraced former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and disgraced current lawyer Sidney Powell. But even Mr. Giuliani felt that the idea of bringing in the military was beyond the pale. Do you know how crazy you have to be <laughs> to hear that you've gone too far from Rudy Giuliani? That is like... That is like... That's like hearing you've had too much to drink from Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> or you've got to get those bottom teeth fixed from Rudy Giuliani. Or don't try to fish your penis out of your pants in front of a Borat film true from Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> and so far... <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so far, none of these goons are in jail or disbarred, but that could change is what I tell myself every night when my head hits the pillow. <laughs> the January 6th committee is uh, on the job, and they're lucky to be learning any of this, because some of the White House records turned over to them had to be taped back together by National Archives staff because they had been ripped up. Sounds like during the pandemic, the people at the National Archives also got into puzzles. Okay, it's fun. I start with the corners, <laughs> then I do the sides, and the ooh, 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 I got a ketchup stain. Wait, I saw another red one. Oh, here's another red one. The reds don't match. Oh, wait, when is this from? March 21st? It's a Taco Tuesday. That's salsa. Oh, my goodness. Now, it violates the Presidential Records Act to tear up official documents. But the former president had a very good reason. He was afraid of going to jail. Also, <laughs> he was known inside the White House for his habit of tearing presidential records into shreds and tossing them on the floor, which advisors call the president's unofficial filing system. <laughs> so, destroying evidence is his filing system. <laughs> hey, what happened to Rocco? Thought he was gonna testify against us. Let's just say Rocco is filing with the fishes. <laughs> It wasn't just tearing, according to White House advisors. He once ate a sensitive document. <laughs> he would have eaten more sensitive documents, but he ran out of ranch. Oh. Speaking of the worst people in public office, Florida governor and man describing what Adele's music means to him, Ron DeSantis, over the weekend, horrifically, there were a couple of Nazi rallies in Orlando. I assume they were trying to annex the Sudetenland pavilion at Epcot. Now, this is terrible and the easiest thing in the world to condemn unless you're Ron DeSantis, who remains silent. It's been said the only thing necessary for evil to succeed is for good men to say nothing. It's also bad when Ron DeSantis says nothing. <laughs> then DeSantis got cornered by some no-good reporters wanting to know things like, hey, Gov, so Nazis, uh, where do you come down on that whole deal? But a DeSantis identified the true enemy, Democrats. What I'm going to say is these people, uh, these Democrats who are trying to use this as some type of political issue to try to smear me as if I had something uh, to do with it, we're not playing their game. He seems to think being asked how he feels about Nazis is some kind of gotcha question <laughs> instead of the biggest softball of all time. Watch. I think Nazis are bad. Where, where do I get the courage? <laughs> Not from Ron DeSantis. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Faith Hill and Clarissa Ward via satellite from Ukraine. But when we come back, I'll tell you whether Russia has invaded yet. The answer may surprise me.